Praise the Lord. My name is Natasha from Love's Cure Ministries. Thank you for joining me for another video. Today we are discussing Adam and the eighth day. We are going to see the significance in new beginnings. So let's get started. In chapter one of Genesis, we read from verses one through 23 about the first five days where God created the heavens and the earth and all that is therein. In verse 24, the sixth day, God created living creatures according to its kind. He created cattle and creeping things. And as we continue to read on in verse 26, this is our focus. The verse says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. In verse 27 it says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. This is important. We're placing a highlight on this passage, and in particular the words, male and female, created in the sixth day. The significance of the number six is attributed to mankind. And we know that a triple six is contributed to the adversary. And so we see here in the sixth day that male and female of the world, with that significance in the sixth day, they were created. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. It continues on in verse 29, it says, And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be for food, also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, in which there is life. I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. That is the end of chapter 1. Now we're going into chapter 2, and it's going to continue on to talk about the Shabbat, the rest day, the day of ceasing, the seventh day. We know that the number seven is attributed to holiness, righteousness, God, the existence of power, who is the Lord. And we know that a triple seven is the Lord's number. And this is why we have to keep in mind that the day of ceasing, the number seven, the seventh day, is a holy convocation. It is a day of remembrance. And so we are not to do what is common. We are to keep that day holy and sacred. But now in talking about the seven days, we have to keep in mind that there is no significant language within that first chapter that specifically talks about Adam, Adam and Eve. It talks about male and female. And so if we are reading the scripture and comprehending the scripture in the correct and proper Hebraic biblical context, 
we will see that that is not how Adam and Eve were created. In fact, we're going to read right now as we continue on into chapter two, how Adam and Eve were created. In the beginning of chapter two, as I mentioned, it begins with talking about the rest day, the Shabbat and the seventh day. Towards the end of this first passage in chapter two, in verse seven, which is interesting because seven has that significance. So it's really interesting how this verse, verse seven, talks about the forming of man, which is Adam. The verse says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. We have already gone over in chapter 1 that male and female were created in the sixth day. And now we see after the day of rest, after the day of ceasing in the seventh day is a new beginning, which is the eighth day. This is the proper Hebraic context and significance of the number eight. It stands for new beginnings. And we see, as I mentioned, after the seventh day comes the eighth day. Here comes the new beginning. And what does God do in the new beginning? He forms man. He forms Adam from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils. What does that mean? Although he made male and female in his image, the fact that he breathed into Adam means that, yes, Adam is created in his image. But the difference is, is that in breathing into his nostrils, that word Breathe, breathing, breath. It is related to God's spirit. Here it is showing in the scripture that God breathed that amazing miracle into the body of Adam. He breathed. There was a transference there. There was a a lending, a, a grace in sharing his spirit was put into Adam to dwell with him. And this is how man became a living being. The miracle of walking dust, we see here in verse 7 of chapter 2. And as we continue on, we read about life in God's garden. And within this passage, it talks about the creation of Eve which is more towards the end of that passage. In verse 21, it says, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, and the man and his wife were not ashamed. We see in chapter 2 that there is depth and detail of the life and location and the creation of God's people, which in the beginning was made separate from the creation of the world. This is the mystery that is revealed within the truth in layers. And this is why I always say in these videos and on the ministry website within the articles as well, that we have to read the word of God for ourselves. We have to get alone with God in the secret place and pray that the Holy Spirit anointing of that teaching and that guiding and direction according to James chapter 4 verse 4 is with us because we will miss this miracle and we will think that there is no division, that there is no separation between the creation of male and female versus the creation of God's people 
that began with man and woman, notice that in chapter 1, the population is regarded as male and female. And then after the rest day, after the seventh day, within the eighth day, in that new beginning, God's people, beginning with Adam and his wife, they were created. And the breath of God was breathed into Adam, into man. And woman was created from that man. We see here the first unity of man and wife, of that marriage, that sacred bond, a mirror image of our wholeness and completeness in our God and King. We see references throughout the Bible of Yeshua, our Messiah, and the bride, the ultimate example of the unity of marriage. All of this was from the beginning. In the eighth day, the significance of new beginnings. So we see this here in the front of the book. And although there are other examples that we'll go over in another video of the significance of the number eight, those new beginnings, we see in the back of the book, in the book of Revelation in chapter 21, we are unified with our God and King eternally in the eighth day. And before I touch on that, I will just point to a reference in chapter 20, where Satan is bound for a thousand years. Asatan, Satan, the adversary, is bound during the day of ceasing. And within that day of ceasing, we see the eternal reign that the saints reign with Christ for a thousand years, the eternal Shabbat. And within this time, in that reigning, we see that they are regarded as priests of God and of Christ. And it is made very clear that the priests shall reign with our God and King for that holy, sacred, set-apart time of a thousand years. But what happens when the thousand years are expired? The satanic rebellion was crushed. Now, within that passage, it says, after the thousand years had expired. And so this is regarded to the day of the new beginning. That after the day of ceasing, the eternal reign of the saints with Christ and our Father, that the adversary and the rebellion was released and crushed in that eighth day. Now, why would our God release Satan in that eighth day, in that day of new beginnings, the day after the day of ceasing. Why would he do that? Well, if we reference back to the book of Genesis, in chapter 3, after the creation of man and woman, it talks about the temptation and fall of man. And so if we read through chapter 3, we'll see here, that there is no reference to the morning and the evening being the eighth day. And so we can read here that this is a continuation of that same day of man and woman being created. It's as if the adversary was moving around the earth to and fro and just lurking and waiting to corrupt the chosen of God. And so, just as we see with Messiah's victory, his sacrifice, in order to correct the corruption, there has to be some sort of reversal, if you will. However the corruption began, it needs to be crushed in like manner. And so just as the serpent corrupted the chosen of God, Adam and his wife, Eve, in that eighth day, in that new beginning, we see the crushing of the adversary in like manner, in the eighth day, in that day of new beginning, the day after the eternal Shabbat. It actually says within the passage entitled Satanic Rebellion Crushed, 
in verse 10, the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So it's interesting. You can see that prophecy holds true. The beast and the false prophet were already, according to the passage, they are already in the midst of the lake of fire and brimstone. And Satan is then thrown in, cast into that lake and fire where they are already tormented for eternity. And so, yes, the satanic rebellion is crushed within that eighth day, within that new beginning. And after the work is complete, we read of the great white throne judgment. We read of the book of life and the significance of that judgment and the names written in that scroll. And unfortunately, the demise of the names that are not written in that book of life. They too will be cast into the lake of fire. All of these things are being established and crushed once and for all, wiping the slate completely clean in that new beginning. And this is why we read in Revelation chapter 21 that all things are made new. We see the creation of the new heaven and the new earth. And we finally see the wholeness and completeness, that unification of the bride and bridegroom finally being reunited eternally. That what was destined from the beginning has now come full circle to be reunited without any corruption, any disruption, any tainting of sin. We read of the New Jerusalem and the glory of New Jerusalem, the river of life. And of course, God is so good to allow us, according to his will, to have a warning and confirmation. See, the beginning and the end of God's word are witnesses. They are two witnesses. That is a separate reference from the two witnesses that we have read about in the last days. But this is a pattern of the confirmation and significance of having two witnesses that testify to the glory and word of God. And here we see that God confirms his own word because his word holds true. And this is how we know that he is the true and living God according to scripture. The Lord says, you will know me. You will know that I am the true and living God because what I speak is fulfilled. It goes forth and exists. The prophecies manifest and the reality that is before us is before us because God has already spoken these things into existence. So he gives us a warning. Yeshua speaks. The living word, the living scroll himself speaks and warns and testifies to us, the body, that what is established in the end was already established in the beginning. It was already foretold. And so God did not just choose us in the time of Moses. He did not just choose us when he established the covenant, the written tangible tablet that we can hold and see and know. Indeed, the covenant was established before that time within the foundations of the world. That covenant was established by God himself with his people. And we see that unification and that confirmation in the eighth day, the day of new beginnings. And glory to God, if we hold fast and press toward the goal, are tenacious and have the patience of the saints, being faithful, putting all of our trust in our God and King, we too will be reunited as the bride, 
unified in that eternal marriage with our Messiah King and our Father in the eternal day of new beginnings. Until next time, bye friends.